So it turns out that copying a string is not nearly as simple as copying a primitive like an int or a float. After all, underneath the hood, a string is a sequence of characters. So copying a string, therefore, has to involve copying that whole sequence of characters. Let's turn our attention back to that last implementation and rip out this line, string t equals s, which clearly wasn't sufficient. Let's replace it with a line that looks instead like this. String t gets malloc of string length of s plus 1 times the size of a char. Now, there's quite a bit going on in this line of code. First, malloc, short for memory allocation. And the function does just that. Given an integer, it returns to you the address of a chunk of memory of that many bytes. Meanwhile, the string length of s plus 1 is meant to indicate that we want as many bytes as s already occupies, including its null terminator, the backslash 0 at the end of a string. Meanwhile, I don't necessarily remember how big a char is, even though on most systems it's simply one byte. So I'll call size of char to figure out dynamically how big an individual character is. Once multiplied together, I get back the total number of bytes that I need. But what if malloc fails to return the memory we need? I best check for that as follows. If t equals null, then I'm first going to free s, the memory returned by get string, and then I'm going to return 1 to signify error. But if all is well, I'm going to proceed to use a for loop and iterate as follows. For int i gets 0, n equals the string length of s. I'm going to do this so long as i is less than or equal to n, so that I iterate up through and including the null terminating character in s. And on each iteration, I'm going to increment i. Meanwhile, inside of this loop, to copy s's ith character into t's ith location, it suffices to do t bracket i gets s bracket i. I'd best add one additional line to my code. In particular, because I'm now using malloc, asking for memory, it's my responsibility to free up that memory when I'm done with it, just like we should be freeing memory that's given to us by getString. So at the very end of this program, I'm going to add one additional line to free t before returning 0 to indicate success. Let's now save, compile, and run this new program. Make copy1 dot slash copy1. And I'll say something like hello in all lowercase. And thankfully, this time, my original remains unchanged, hello in all lowercase, but the copy is indeed capitalized.